Hi guys, this is Sadiq from Webin.com. In this video, we'll show you how to flash the latest Axion OS ROM based on Android 16 onto the Moto G54 5G and the Moto G64 codename CanCuff. So please take a backup of all that on your phone and then let's get started. So first and foremost, you have to get the latest Android SDK from my article and extract them onto a PC. You may start them anywhere you want. In my case, I have done some C drive and let me show you the following of the five platform tools as you could see over here. So after that, enable USB debugging and OEM unlocking. The debugging is required for ADB command and OEM unlocking is required to unlock the phone. So let's enable both the toggles onto our phone. For that, go to settings. From there, go to about phone, then device identifiers. Tap on build number seven times. Now go back. Again, go back, go to system, dev options, and enable the toggle next to OEM unlocking, as well as USB debugging. You get a prompt on your phone, type on OK. You might get one more prompt. Again, type on Allow. And with this, the debugging is now enabled. Let me first verify that as well for verification. Type in CMD here. Hit the Enter key. Then type in the command of ADB devices and verify you are having an ID. So you could see in our case, we are having this ID. If that's all well and good, then next up, you have to unlock the phone. For that, we have made a video and an article, which is over here. In short, simply boot to fast boot mode. Then type in this command. You will get an unlock data, transfer this unlock data to the site of Motorola, the link is given in my article, and then you will get a device unlock code, paste the device unlock code over here, after the firewood OEM unlock, hit the enter key, then your phone will be unlocked as you could see. So once that is complete, your phone will undergo a wipe and then move to the OS. After that, re enable USB debugging once again. Moving on, now get the Exxon AOSP ROM file, the GMS or the vanilla bed, for now I'm using the GMS bed, also get the IMG files, the IMG file will be in a zip file. Do not extract the zip file. Keep it as it is. So let me show you. Uh, we have the Axion OSP. This is the files having the few IMG files you could see. So don't extract the zip file. Apart from that, also get the latest ROM file which we have got. Then transfer both the files inside the folder of platform tools, which is here. Likewise, do a renaming. Let's rename the ROM file to just rom.zip. It will be easier to type in the CMD window. And these folders should be renamed to let's say IMG. The name becomes imt.zip. So once that is complete, your next action is to boot the phone to fastboot D mode because you have to flash the files in the fastboot D mode and not the fastboot mode. So keep this point in mind. So open the same window here, type in the command adb reboot and be the fastboot because we want the fastboot D mode. Type in fastboot, hit the enter key. The phone should now be in the fastboot D mode in around 10 to 15 seconds. So let's wait for that to complete also. Type in the command of fastboot devices and verify that you are having an ID. So let me show you that. So wait for a few more seconds and then you will get the fastboot D screen. Once that happens, type in this command and then we'll verify if the phone is in the fastboot D mode and if the PC is able to read the phone in this mode or not. This will take a few seconds and we are now in the fastboot D mode. Now type in this command and as you could see, we are having this ID. If you're not having the ID, then please install the fastboot drivers onto your PC. The link for the fastboot drivers are given here. Install it. After that, right click on the Windows icon and choose Device Manager. Then expand the Android phone section and verify your phone is shown here. As you could see over here, ADB is fine. Interface. When that is complete, we could now flash the ROM file. So for that, first off, let's flash the IMG file. So we are in the fastboot mode already. Once that is done, let's flash the IMG zip file. So copy the entire command, paste the command in the CMD window. And we have the file you could see img.zip is the file name which we have over here. This is the files and the command is as follows password skip reboot update img.zip hit the enter key. The flashing will now start take only a few seconds. So let's wait for that to complete and once that is done the phone will automatically boot to fastboot mode now. From the fastboot D mode the flashing is now done and we are now in the fastboot mode. So now let's reboot to the recovery the newly flash USB recovery. Type in the command fastboot reboot recovery and hit the enter key. This will take a few more seconds. So let's wait for that to happen. And after that, we may flash the ROM file with ease. So I guess 10 to 15 more seconds are remaining in this task. After which you could format the phone, flash the ROM and then move to the OS. After this motor logo, we should now be inside the AOSP recovery, which is the Exxon AOSP recovery for now. And you could see we are inside the recovery. First off, type on factory reset, format data, once again, format data, 
data pipe is now complete. So go back, apply update from ADB, and first verify if your phone is in the side load mode or not. You could see side load. If that's all well and good, type in the command ADB side load and the file name, which is rom.zip. Hit enter. The flashing will now start. Take up to around four to five minutes. So let's wait for that to complete. So guys, the flashing is just about to get complete. Let me show you that in a matter of few more seconds. So as you could see if you want to flash any other zip file such as gapps or matches, then type on yes or else type on no. In my case, I'm using the GMS build only, so I already have the GI packages. I will type on no. If you want to flash any file, then type on yes. Finally, once you have flashed all the files, please do a factory reset once again. This is a must. So formatting of the phone before and after ROM flashing is should be done. And when that is complete, type on reboot system now. The phone will boot to the OS, but the first booting up will take up some time. I guess 30 to 40 seconds at the very max. So let's keep a tab on that. Let's at least see the boot logo or the boot animation. That will signify flashing has been done successfully. So they should now appear anytime soon. And after that, we'll have a look at the ROM features. It's USB as well. After this logo, we should now have the boot animation if the flashing was fine, which I guess it should be fine because we haven't got any bugs or errors by flashing. So with that in mind, let's just keep a tab on the Axion OS boot animation. And you could now see we have got the animation. So now again, you have to wait for, I guess, 10 to 20 more seconds. So let's wait for that. And we are now inside the OS. So let's get started. For now, I'm skipping this. If you want, you may connect to Wi-Fi, link your Google account and restore all the app data. But that will take a lot of time. So for now, I'm skipping that and simply accept all the terms and condition. Let's skip this as well. This might take a few seconds. Let's skip this for now. Axion. Okay, what was this? Axion OS features. Okay, it's fine. Next. Dark theme is fine. Tap on next once again. Distance navigation is fine as well. Hit start. And we are now inside the Axion OS based on Android 16. On our phone, I don't know why the app icons are what they are doing at the top. Anyways, the few pre installed apps are there such as Play Store, Google Phone, G Google App, Contacts files are there. The Moto, the camera is Moto camera. Let me see it once. Yes, it's the Motorola camera. The automatic call recording app BCR is there as well. This is the QF tiles as you could see over here. Then we have the settings menu, the new revamp settings menu. Scroll down to the special features and let's see what all is there. Experimental features, notification road transparency. Well, let me see in the lock screen. Just give me a second. I guess it's requiring a UI restart, which we'll do at the very end. In the performance, display boost, touch boost. I don't know whether this will work anything or not. So if you're not sure about these tweaks, it's better to leave them as they are and don't touch them because the ROM is fine in this only. But if you want to overclock the CPU and GPU, this might work up to an extent. Security, ignore secure flags. This will help you take a screenshot in apps which do not allow such as all the banking apps, streaming apps. You will take a screenshot in that. Hide an app list. So if you want to hide, let's say, routing app from any of these apps, for example, you may have hide all the routing app from, let's say, any banking app, check market, then all the app will be hidden from there. Hide dev status, okay, which we have seen this already just now. In the hide dev status, you may easily hide the dev mode from these apps. For example, I have a banking app known as iMobile banking app that tends to check for the status. So you may simply add the iMobile app over here and the app will no longer check for the dev status. That's great to see. Security is complete. Then we have status bar settings. Padding is not required. Spoofing, well, that is great to see. GMS spoof is fine. First off, connect to Wi-Fi, then do an update PIF, and then upload the keybox file, and then let's see what happens. Just give me a second. First of all, let me verify if I have a keybox file which is there. It is revoked or not. So this is one of my phones which is using the latest keybox file. So let me first perform a check. Just give me a second. So it's currently not revoked. The file is of version is of size 13.06 KB. My 23rd file is the keybox file. 23rd one. Let me now connect to Wi-Fi. This will help me get the latest PIF file. So once that is complete, let's access the 
recent apps. First off, tap on update PIF and we will now get a new PIF file from the Pixel 9 Pro. The phone will vary, that's all normal, nothing to worry about. Then just tap on select keybox file. Okay, let's transfer the file onto my phone first and foremost. File transfer is enabled and the keybox file should be there on my PC. This is the file. Copy it and paste the file onto your phone. Likewise, do a renaming and rename it to keybox. Remove the numbers from the end. That is a must. So once that is complete, tap on select keybox file. Choose the file. It's not loaded. So after this, please do a restart. Likewise, you also have to log into Play Store via Google account after a restart. And then you'll pass the strong test with ease because I'm using the same file which I've shown you just now on my phone, on my Poco phone or the same phone. So since we're using the same keyboard file, you should pass a strong test as well. Just make sure to do a restart, then log into your Play Store account and then verify the result as well. Always first off, update PIF, then upload the keyboard file. And then you could pass the strong test. It's the same file as you could see over here. So after that, okay, for the keyboard file, you may go to my article, which is over here. And from my article, there are two ways out. You may either ask for the file using the article's comment section. I will email you the file personally. So please ask from here and I'll email you the file. If your ROM is obtained root by Magis API or KSU, in that case, you may also use a module as well. The module will give you the unrevoked keyboard file. Both the approach will work. The mod is only for the rooted phone, which is quite obvious. And the email is for all the phones. So if your phone is currently not rooted, then you may have the file by email or if it's currently obtained root, you may use our module to get the job done. And apart from that, what else are remaining? So in the system, what is there? System profiles, it's normal, USB configuration, updates. You may install the updates from this section, the OT updates, or you may also install the update via the USB recovery. Do an ADB side load of the recovery zip file, place the zip file inside the photo of platform tools, and then do an ADB side load. Both the method will work with ease. So apart from that, in the display section, brightness, light to brightness, dark theme, night light, color contrast, it's you know, all fine. Screen saver display, let's keep it at 120 hertz. So we are having this menu. I haven't seen this menus on, on I guess any other ROM till date. We usually get 120, 60 and dynamic, but we have the option. Okay, tap to wake and tap to sleep. Sleep is working, double tap to wake is also working. Display features, high brightness mode is not required. Display cutout for the notch is fine, normal one is great. Okay, AOD. Okay, it's for the ambient display. Okay, let's see. When you pick up the phone or something like that, it will automatically light up the display based on the pickup notification, hand wave or pockets. But only when you get a notification, I suppose. And uh, in the lock screen tweaks, lock screen appearance. Okay, these are the various clocks. Some of them are from the Nothing OS. This one looks nice as well. Let's go with this one only. And it's applied. Okay, yes, it's applied. Quick look, weather, schedule, not playing, it's all fine. Privacy. Media cover art is not required. Add text on lock screen if you want. You may add the text over here. And the same will be shown, but only when the phone is not charging. Let me show you what I mean. The text is shown at the bottom. So let's unplug it. And you could now see right when it's there. The new clock cell is there as well. Okay, what is this power of verify? When, you, when your device is locked, you will need to use your password to power off the restart. That will only add one more step, which is not required. Okay, AOD is here. Always show different time. Well, I don't know why it's currently not showing. Always show time and input consume more power. That's fine. Show briefly. But I don't know why that is the case. I guess it's asking for a UI restart. And only then this might work. Not an issue. Let me turn off this feature. And I suppose that's all. Okay, let's now have a look at the wallpaper style section from here. You may change the wallpaper if there are any from this section. Okay, there are various wallpapers as you could see. Some of the are the from the USB ROM, the Nothing Phone, Nothing 2.0, Pixel phones are also there, Pixel 8a, Nothing 2a, Pixel 9 series, CMF, Nothing 2a plus. Okay, there are various wallpapers. You may choose from any of these of your choice. Let's say Pixel 9 series. This is the one which I'm currently using on my Pixel 9 series. Anyways, 
apart from that you may enable theme icons and they are now implemented average size 5 cos 5 is the one which I use always then this is the one which only makes sense then icons default let's change it to lawn I don't know nostalgia okay for the android 5 or 6 versions I suppose plumpy also looks fine okay it's applied now let's go back icon font well it's a long list of icon font let's see surfer how it looks applying this might take up a few seconds that's all normal icon shape let's see pebble is the one which i use always and it's now applied you could see from here from the home screen and the app drawer it's now applied as well then you may change the themes from this section or from here or you may also switch to the light theme from here or go back to dark theme according to your choice the light theme looks nice much better in the dark one in the lock screen you may change the clock style okay the clock style you have changed already so this will not work from here home screen is fine as well and i suppose that is all in the home settings and enable blur let's see how it looks blur in the lock screen is there or not i don't know what blur exactly it's talking about we cannot see any blur whatsoever or if i guess it's requiring for a ui restart notification dot access is required so okay they have their own pulse launcher for people scrolling so google app is a must on the left hand side of the scrolling so i have to start search use theme icon in app drawer you must turn that on so i can label this fine double tap to sleep which we have tested already this is the google app which i'm talking about you must turn this off if not required so guys that's all from this video if you have any query with regard to one of the steps let me know in the comment section and thanks a lot for watching